in the next 50 years, the global population will consume twice as much food as the global population has consumed since the beginning of agriculture 10,000 years ago. The challenge facing us today is to double food production by 2050, when we will have approximately 9.2 billion people living on Mother Earth. Now, in order to do that, conventional technology alone will not be a solution. Neither will biotechnology. It is not a panacea. What we are proposing is that you take the best of conventional technology, the old and the best of the new. And it is the synergy between these two sciences that offers us the best promise of feeding the world of tomorrow. This year's report, the 2009 ISA overview of biotech crops on a global basis, has been entirely funded by two European not-for-profit organizations. The first is the Bussolera Branca Foundation in Italy, and the second is a bank in Spain, Ibercaja. Spain actually grows 80% of all the biotech crops in Europe. It is important to understand that ISA is a pro-choice organization. We believe that those people who want to have organic food and can afford it, should have it. That those people who want to rely on conventional technology should have conventional crops. But also, those people that want to benefit from the significant and multiple benefits that biotechnology offers should have it. We are talking about coexistence, and that is exactly what is happening in Spain today. The organic agriculture, the conventional agriculture, and biotech agriculture coexists. Biotech crops has not had an easy road. The public have been skeptical about various aspects of this technology. And indeed, it is important to note that it was scientists who indicated right at the beginning, before the genesis of biotechnology in 1996, that you needed a rigorous system to make quite sure that we identified any non-intended effects with this technology. The acceptance issues fall into four categories. First, are the foods from biotech crops safe? And what we can say today, after 14 years of usage, is that these crops are as safe as conventional technology. There is no zero risk in biology. And in certain cases, with Bt maize, insect-resistant maize, in fact, biotech crops are safer because they have lower levels of mycotoxin. The second concern is environmental concerns. And what we see with this technology is that biotech crops have decreased significantly the amount of pesticides going on to food crops, a very positive development. In Europe in particular, the issue of who owns the technology has been one of the most important areas. We should be careful not to shoot the messenger, to look at the technology itself. And what we can see today is the landscape of ownership in terms of this technology is changing extremely fast. As China invests public, not private, public money in this technology, we estimate that China today is spending more money in terms of R&D, research and development funds on biotech crop than any other public or private institution. The same thing is happening in Brazil, in South Africa, in India. And the fourth concern has been related to the ethical considerations, something that you can not judge from a scientific point of view. But I believe that there are two words that are important in relation to these four acceptance issues. The first is the word respect. We in science always give high priority to a diversity of views. In the same way that we respect biodiversity, 
we should respect a diversity of views on the subject. The second word is accommodation. We should identify any bona fide issue and integrate it into a global strategy that will allow us to feed the world of tomorrow.